What's up guys, it's the Notorious Nomad here. So, this week I got Watch Dogs and I was starting it off and I was going to make post some gameplay videos, but I was a little disappointed in, at the start. So I wanted to be able to give this game a fair review. So what I did over the week um, is just play through the campaign um, and what I did was just went and I finished the campaign. So now what I'm, what I'm doing right now is starting up a new game. Um, I'm going to play through the tutorial and let y'all watch like the first cutscenes and all that. Um, and that way I can kind of talk and review the game as you guys can kind of see like a little bit of how to play uh, on a basic level and just kind of like the starting uh, starting point of the game. So uh, I won't talk during any of the videos so that you guys can see them if you want. Um, but here you go. Here's kind of the first starting point. Bullshit, and I'm sick of getting harassed for it. All the more reason for a purge. We'll be watching. Try to keep up. By the way, we put this playlist together to set the mood. Hope you like it. Alright guys, so this is starting point and this is basically just the tutorial and I'm I mean I've played the game, I beat the whole campaign, so I'm just gonna kinda quickly run through this, uh, but you guys can just kinda see some of the gameplay and how it works in terms of that. But so the whole idea of this game is to kind of well, you're a hacker, obviously. Right now what you're trying to do is get into um DeadSec, which is a hacker group, and what their kind of goal is is to take down Bloom, which is basically this big company that's taking over. If, you, if you've seen the first Watch Dogs, you'll kind of understand a little bit of it, um, but I'm sure as I go on, it'll become clear. After the first video, I'll explain a little more what I think of this game and kind of the plot and all that, um, but just so that I don't have to really go and explain the whole beginning of the game that you guys can just see this mission and hopefully that'll kind of get you introduced to it and then I'll kind of explain from there. So in terms of like the combat and the movement and that kind of stuff, it's it's pretty good. This game does put a lot of emphasis on You're stealth. Your time. I'll let you watch this. He's not in. Gotcha. So that's him. He's got a gun. Is that a problem? Well, problems are why you keep me around, right? Time him. I'm curious. Too late. He's in. Already? No synonyms either. Give me a real answer. I'm just not that into aliens or video games. It's not just any alien. It's oh come on. Anyone else having a problem with their phone? Oh god! Oh god! Ah! 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 Who is he? It's retro. The home domain awareness hacker? That retro? Yes. We told you that already. Yeah, I never listen. Okay, so basically, as you can see, um, Marcus's main weapon is basically like uh, a pool ball on a rope. I mean, which is kind of weird in and of itself. I mean, it turns out to be a very effective weapon, but I feel like the amount of time to like realistically master this weapon and be an amazing hacker is kind of unrealistic there. I mean, I don't know if you guys played the first Watch Dogs, but in that game, you had a baton, he was uh, open, but was born in... <laughs> which seemed a bit he's more realistic. He's been hanging around the DeadSec IRC, and he's gone so, but, I mean, it does make for some cool combat, um, and basically your melees are always, like, one-hit kills, which is nice, but the, um... 
as you go on in the game, your weapons definitely get a lot weaker. Uh, you, these guards are all, you can see, any, later on in the game they'll get armor and stuff, and these guards are all one shot for now, basically, in the head. But later on, even your stun gun is not kind of a one shot. It takes a little while to uh, to really like get. I think it takes one of the guards I was trying to hit took like three shots, uh, which was a little bit ridiculous. So basically, this game puts a lot of emphasis on the stealth and kind of moving around because Marcus cannot take a lot of bullet damage, um, which is more realistic. So that's, I guess, a good thing, depending on how you like to play. Now, you, I'm doing a lot of stealth here. You could go through kind of just with this little stun gun, um, which is silent. But it's, I mean, I don't really like using it because it's so, like, slow. And personally, I find it easier to just go through stealth by, like, sneaking around corners and kind of hitting people. Especially since later... Especially since later on they get a bunch of like armor and stuff, so I, I don't I'm used to not using this stun gun. If someone's coming out. And what's nice about the combat in this game is you get this like net hack or I can't remember what it's called. Um but it's like this view where you get to kind of see through walls and um shoot this guy. Oh, see. Whoops. That was a mistake. I just assumed the auto-aim would go on there. But, um, another thing I don't like about the stun gun is it puts them to sleep. So, like, other enemies can wake them up. So, like this, they're not coming back from. Obviously, but... You can see he's got a little Z's on him, he's just taking a little nap, and then later on, like, their friends will come back and wake him up, so you'll go through kind of stealthily knocking all these people out, and then their friends just walk by and just wake them right back up. So, that's one of the problems I have with this stun gun, um, which is a kind of a basic weapon for stealth in this game, so that's why I use a lot of melee. Another thing about this net hack is that you can see kind of like all the cameras um, and kind of like other things that you can interact with through walls and everything, which is pretty helpful. I mean, the cameras can be used kind of for scoping out enemies and that kind of stuff. Uh, later on, you get the RC car and the drone, uh, which are both very helpful. So that kind of replaces the camera somewhat, depending on you know, the layout of the place you're in. But I found them pretty helpful. Right here, what you see is the main hacking mini mini game. Um, and what you do is you kind of just turn these. It's pretty straightforward. You have to turn these and make the blue all line up. Uh, they get a lot more complicated than this later on in the game. But it's... They don't overdo it in this game, which, which I liked about it. It definitely... It doesn't feel like they do this too much, uh, but at the same time, there's kind of a good amount of it. So it's not it's not too much or too little. It, it feels like an appropriate amount for the game, uh, which was good. What the fuck? Why 
have my threat so high. This is bullshit. So, one of my things here is that Marcus seems absolutely so surprised that he's marked as like a high risk target. And we literally just broke into a facility, are deleting his record, and beat up a bunch of people. So, to me, that kind of seems like the CTOS here did its job and marked him as a high risk target because I mean he's literally in their facility beating up their employees uh, seems like a risk to me so my like I wouldn't care if he was like a high risk target and he's like leaning his criminal record is like okay I mean he's a hacker like I would understand why CTUS has a problem with him but for him to be surprised almost seems kind of ridiculous to me and he's saying it's unfair but you can see um, uh, I don't know if you guys saw on the other screen. Well, you can see here suspicious purchases, and he bought like lock picks and stuff. So I mean, it's definitely not like totally unwarranted. He has been like he is a hacker, and he's broken into places. He's obviously used that ball on a chain before and beaten the crap out of some people. So. I'm not really sure the computer's wrong here, which is one of the problems I have at the start of this game. Just like, why, why are you so surprised, Marcus? a little back door into the system so I can get back inside later. Sorry, Bloom. We've got unfinished business. He's heading out. Bag him. Yeah. cool parts about this game is the uh, proximity tracks traps uh, and they can you can basically set them on like all sorts of stuff and it'll just kind of explode when someone walks by it's really helpful for even like police chases and stuff like that um, and that works out pretty well it's kind of a cool thing where you, you don't have to time it exactly oh. it comes so you can see the seeing through walls thing is pretty helpful here. So I do like the stealth component in this game. It's a it's a little bit to get used to if you don't play any stealth games often. But definitely, I spent a lot of time in this net hack, um, simply because like the seeing through walls thing is. Super helpful. I mean, you can even see them when you haven't seen them yet. They're just, it just doesn't tell you if they're an enemy, but. The stealth um, also gets helped by your hacking skills, which you get more of later in the game. Oh crap, see. And if you don't really go stealth, people call for reinforcements and it kind of becomes a mess, so. That's what I should have avoided in this, but I guess it's good to show you guys. That's what happens when you try to kind of like rush through it. 
you can also survive a ridiculous amount of fall damage in this game. Which can sometimes be great, but really is a little bit ridiculous. So, I mean, it is fun to just jump off something and not really worry about it too much. Hold it right there. Help him. Where the fuck am I going? Josh. Okay. Okay. Fuck you, Bloom. <laughs> In 2013, Chicago realized the promise of smart cities with CTOS, a citywide operating system merging big data with surveillance, security, and transit programs. With a few hundred lines of code, hackers were able to hijack its central servers and cripple the entire grid. Many believed the attack would be a killing blow for smart city development. They were wrong. Coordinated from the heart of Silicon Valley, CTOS 2.0 has been implemented across the United States, ushering in the Internet of Things. 6.4 billion connected devices now serve as collection points, mapping and recording our daily routines, making a more secure and more invasive system. But who else is listening? Big Brother no longer works alone. Thousands of little brothers monitor and aggregate your every move building a complete digital profile of you to be bought, sold, or stolen in an instant. Toys study your children, reporting their play habits back to marketers. Appliances, consoles, and home security systems give corporations a window into your private life. Control of your vehicle and mobile device can now be breached remotely by anyone at any time. You may think that you are immune or underestimate the risk, but your digital shadow is already compromised. Insurance companies use algorithms to monitor your life habits and limit or deny coverage. Health providers determine if your cancer is is worth treating. Search results and news fees are skewed to bias mood and influence your vote, engineering social uprisings on a massive scale. You are now less valuable than the data you produce. Data you produce. This is the new reality. Going dark is no longer an option. With threats to personal freedom rising, many are stepping forward. Whistleblowers, activists, and hackers have drawn their battle lines, putting the establishment on watch. But are they threats themselves, or have they become freedom's last line of defense? Freedom's last line of defense. So? Am I in? Welcome to Dead Sack. <sighs> I'm Satara. This sweetheart is Josh, AKA Hot Sauce. Yo, you're Hot Sauce? Yo, yeah, man, I loved your frat house hat. Real talk. Thanks. This weirdo's wrench. The needs of the many. And this Casanova is Horatio. What's up, brother? Something, man. It's the crew, huh? Took y'all long enough to come get me. Shit. You saw Bloom's bullshit. CTOS isn't just regulating infrastructure. The amount of personal data that thing is collecting is fucking mind blowing. Yeah. It's Big Brother and Little Brother all rolled up into one. Huh? Sees everything you do and tells on you. Thank you, Josh. So what's the fix? Sledgehammers and fire. No! Sledgehammers on fire. <laughs> All of that data in one place means they can reject your fucking application before you click on it. Congratulations, you have been pre-rejected for our credit card. Or your house, or your insurance. That's not even the worst case scenario. All that data in the hands of the government? They'll arrest you for shit before you even do it. Yeah, I've been there. Now I fucking know why. Man, fuck it! Fuck it, man. We're hackers. We, we out think, we out there. I, I say we tear down the fucking wall. Hey, show everyone what, what Bloom's up to, man. Show, show the world that their personal data is being used to rob them of their fucking freedoms. Fuck. I 
I installed a back door, so all we gotta do is walk right through. Uh, hold on. You what? He installed the back door, so all we have to do is walk through. Bingo. Hey, man. Do you have the time? Oh, yeah, man. I... I got it. I got it. It's kind of late for a night run, isn't it? Hey, what, are you, what are you running from the cops? <laughs> Maybe I am one. Hey, hey you, you look familiar. <laughs> Have a good party. King this mother Fuck you, Bloom. I'm gonna go have a goddamn good time. phone is this? It's your new phone. Where's my phone? In the ocean, where you threw it, I think. I don't remember. I was pretty smashed. Look, meet us at the hackerspace. Where? Check your pics and figure it out. I guess I was lit, huh? <laughs> like Mardi Gras. Go get yourself something to wear, and I'll tell you where to go next. Oh, and you'll need your phone ready for operations, so hit the store and download your apps before you get here. Damn, walk of shame on my first day. So, this game, I mean, you start out in your underwear. I was kind of weird, but so that whole scene is basically the entire, um, I mean, it's basically the entire game's plot right there in front of you when you first start out. Um, and I think that a lot of people have been saying this game has very relatable characters. Um, you really like can connect with them and that kind of stuff. But honestly, I think that may be true later on in the game, about midway through or something, but at the start, they don't feel very relatable to me. I mean, they sit around, they're kind of just complaining about a system everybody has bought into, um, and they're just saying, oh, we're going to basically fuck some shit up and not care what anybody else thinks. Uh, and that's, that's fine, they want to do that, fine, but it's also... At this point, you know, it just seems, okay, Bloom and the other companies are going too much into their personal data, and that's that's probably something that, at this point, I mean, you would assume people are aware of that, and are at least somewhat aware of it, and they should kind of be at least respecting what other people may think about it, and basically, at this point, they just feel kind of like 
terrorists. I mean, you do these you do these missions and stuff, and people will kind of like be okay with it, but you'll get followers and that kind of stuff. That's the whole like purpose of the beginning missions of get followers, make more people like you, and it really feels like you don't have any aim. They keep saying, oh, we're going to take down Bloom, we're going to take down Bloom, but but how? And so they just do this, oh, we just need more followers. So they do this stuff that where they like hurt a bunch of people for basically no reason. And it's I feel like it's pretty hypocritical and really unrelatable at that point because they're, they're hurting all these people for basically what seems like no reason. At the end, it kind of turns out maybe there was a reason for it, but at at the beginning of the game, I mean, you don't know, and they definitely don't know what what they're fighting for, almost. It's like, oh, we're fighting for people, but at the same time, you're hurting a bunch of people, and all these people that you're actually fighting for don't really seem to care. As well as, like, I mean, part of the game, you can, I mean, you can listen to people's conversations, you listen to people's text messages just like at your whim you just take some money out of people's bank accounts so it doesn't really seem like you're the hero that you think you are which is just oh man that's a nice car i never found that as early in the game so it just feels very kind of like unrealistic there and you just like kind of think you're better than everybody else um, one of the things that annoys me about getting into cars is that you actually have to turn off the radio. At this point, I haven't found a way to just default make it not turn on, um, which is kind of annoying, but uh, whatever. So yeah, that's the basic part of the game. That's basically my review of the storyline. Uh, I thought, I mean, it was kind of weak. The ending is pretty... Pretty kind of lackluster, pretty disappointing. Uh, I didn't really think that it was that good. It was kind of anticlimactic at its best um, and disappointing, I guess, at its worst. So there's also that. I mean, I, if you did like Watch Dogs 1 and if you do like the kind of stealth like combat games, uh, I mean, I would recommend this game. Maybe like 3 out of 5, 4 out of 5, you know, three and a half or something. Um, and maybe the DLC, I'll be playing the DLCs and stuff, so I'll put reviews out on that, and, um, that's kind of where, that's kind of where I'm at right now, maybe three and a half out of five, um, and maybe once they put in the multiplayer, which they're having problems with right now, I might raise it a little bit, depending on how that goes, but at this point, it, it's really kind of, it was honestly a little disappointing for me, and, because I, I did enjoy Watch Dogs 1. A lot of people said the character in Watch Dogs 1 was flat. But I kind of felt at least like he had a purpose, you know. I mean, these guys don't really seem to have that much of a purpose. Um, the driving in this game is pretty cool on, the, on another note. Uh, there's a lot of kind of like shortcuts and alleys that you can take. As well as, um, I mean, it just... I'm not great at it, but... Oh, see, there's an instance right there, but it is it is a pretty good like driving mechanics and stuff like that Especially in these like high performance cars um, There's also a lot of breakables and stuff which is cool and as well as some of your new hacking powers Allow you to kind of move people out of your way while you're driving which is incredibly helpful for situations like that um, So my first mission is to buy some pants, so I'll just head over there and I'll kind of make comments throughout this gameplay, but that's the basis of my review. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the powers and stuff as they as they come up. I mean, there's the added RC and the drone, which are kind of interesting to have, but they're not... Uh, I mean, it. the drone is definitely helpful. The RC kind of feels like... They made some missions like around the RC. I think if you, uh, the RC car, I think if you could just like use it to like have an alternative route, that'd be cool. But a lot of missions you like have to use it, which is kind of where it feels like forced. Um, 
but definitely the drone it can't hack anything kind of by itself uh, it can kind of collect data and stuff which is good but the RC car is what you really need to use for these like closed circuit um, hacking jobs which which is a lot of the game because it makes you physically like go places you can't just fly around in your drone and like hack stuff and then leave um, which I guess is good that they did that but the fact that they kind of make you use the RC car to do some of these things is just kind of annoying um, so yeah if you guys have this game let me know what you think um, and if you don't I mean 3 out of 5 I would recommend buying it if you do like uh, other games I mean like Assassin's Creed or Watch Dogs 1 if you do like those games this game is definitely worth buying there's a lot of content in it I mean the main story uh, probably like let's say six or eight hours maybe um, if, you, if you just like blow right through it um, but the all the side missions and stuff that I noticed as I was going along could definitely take a very long time so if you want a game that you really want to if you like those kind of games then it's worth a buy I'll let you guys know whether like the season pass is worth it and the gold edition stuff I got the gold edition and right now it doesn't really seem to do anything for me except for it got me you can see in the wardrobe here what I already have it gets you some basically some different clothes uh, so maybe as it goes on I'll see something else but right now it's just kind of like I'll show you the clothes here Oops. Oh, that's not what I was trying to do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so here's the premium content. So it, uh, it gives you quite a bit of like other clothes and stuff, but it's not like uh, it's not like a ton of stuff. So, all right, guys. Well, that's me for my review. I'm gonna post some other videos up later, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll do some gameplay and stuff like that. This was basically for the review of the combat and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I will, I'll post another review kind of after this just about doing this first mission and stuff. So if you, if you want to see more, go ahead and uh, watch the next video and you'll get to see a little bit more. So thanks for watching you guys and I'll see you all next time.